Cavalcade of Sports is on the air. Gillette presents the seventh and final game of the 1958 World Series between the New York Yankees and Milwaukee Braves. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Wolf greeting you on behalf of the Gillette Safety Razor Company. The top attractions in the world of sport are brought to you the year-round on the Gillette Cavalcade of Sports. These include the World Series, the Blue-Gray Football Game, the World's Invitational Match Game Bowling Championships, the Rose Bowl Game, the Kentucky Derby, the All-Star Baseball Game, and the week's headline boxing attraction every Friday night. Gillette hopes that in this way it shows you how much we appreciate your purchases of Gillette razors, blades, and shaving cream. This is the day, the day that the World Championship of Baseball will be decided. It's been a long trail for both these teams. The weeding out of the top men way back in spring training, the long pennant race, and always in front of both teams, that one goal, the World's Championship. And now, this is it. The end of the trail comes this afternoon. The Braves are trying to do what only two National League clubs have been able to do in World Series history. That is, win two straight world championships. And the Yankees are hoping to accomplish what only one other team has been able to do in the history of the best of seven series. Come back from a three games to one deficit to win the crown. The weather here this afternoon, sunny, bright, it's warm. Although there is a chance of late afternoon showers. It rained hard last night. The outfield is still a bit damp. There's a breeze which is going out toward left center field. The 1958 World Series is being brought to you from County Stadium in Milwaukee. Hello there, everybody. I'm Mel Allen with a giant offer from Papermate that tops them all. Listen, how'd you like a genuine Papermate pen free? How'd you like a genuine Papermate refill free? Sound good? Well, that's exactly what you get. Free pen, free refill. When you buy Papermate's famous two-tone pen at the regular $1.69 price. What a bargain. As it says right on the special Papermate display, you get a two-tone pen worth $1.69, plus an extra silver tip refill worth 49 cents, plus a retractable schoolmate utility pen worth 39 cents. A two fifty seven value, all three for only a dollar sixty nine. How about that? A two fifty seven value for only a dollar sixty nine. Look for the special papermate display at stores everywhere. Buy your two tone pen at regular price. Get an extra pen, an extra refill, free from papermate. The sensational offer is limited, so hurry and get your free papermate pen and free refill now. Now for a look at the lineups. And as we give them to you down below, manager Casey Stengel has come out along with manager Fred Haney and the umpires. Here's how they line up this afternoon for the New York Yankees. Leading off playing right field, Hank Bauer. Batting second and playing second base, Gil McDougald. The number three hitter in center field, it's Mickey Mantle. Batting fourth and catching, Yogi Berra. Batting fifth and playing left field, Elston Howard. Batting sixth and playing third base, Jerry Lumpy. Batting seventh and playing first base, Bill Scourin. Batting eighth and playing shortstop, Tony Kubek. And pitching on the batting ninth is Don Larson. And now for the Milwaukee Braves. Leading off, playing second base, Red Shandinst. The number two hitter in center field, Bill Bruton. Batting third and playing first base, Frank Torrey. Batting fourth and playing right field, Hank Aaron. 
The fifth hitter playing left field, Wes Covington. Playing third base and batting sixth, Ed Matthews. Del Crandall is catching and batting seventh. Johnny Logan is batting eighth, playing shortstop. And pitching and batting ninth, Lou Burdett. As you have noted, Eddie Matthews in the Braves lineup has been moved from third to sixth. And the Braves have five left-handed batters in the lineup this afternoon, including uh, switch hitter Red Chaindienst against Don Larson. And we've noted that Casey Stengel, who was up at the plate with the lineups, now has halted on the way back to the uh, Yankee dugout for another final look at Larson before this ball game gets underway. Casey is still showing a great deal of concern about Larson's arm, whether or not it can come back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there is quiet here in Milwaukee. Our national anthem. seconds for station identification. The yellow label is your only guarantee of getting real Vichy, Saratoga Vichy, if you want real Vichy. Get the yellow label, yellow label, yellow label, yellow label. Yellow label. Yellow label. Insist on the famous yellow label that says Saratoga Vichy. Garage doors for residential, commercial, industrial use. Manual or remote control. Literature on request. Free estimates. Contact Murphy Overhead Doors. 1148 Central Avenue, Albany. WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Climactic game. Billy Bruton, who's 429 average, paces both teams. Hank Aaron at 333. Red Chaindienst to 320. And West Covington at 318. And also, Andy Papko, who has played in four of the six games, is batting at 333. And so is pitcher Warren Spawn, who's batted in three runs, or as many as any Brave in the series. The pitching of Spawn and Burdett in the first games of the series led to the early observation that the Braves' mound staff had an edge over the Yankees. The New York pitching has strengthened, however, and now the Yankee pitchers have a slim edge and earned run average, 3.60 to 3.67. Manager Fred Haney has gotten three complete games out of his starting pitches, while Casey Stengel has had one. But Yankee pitchers have struck out a record number of 53 batters in 54 and two-third innings, almost a strikeout an inning. The Braves have clicked off five double plays to only four by the Yankees. And interestingly enough, Although both clubs have had several exceptionally speedy base runners, this series has seen only one stolen base, and that one by Eddie Matthews in the second game. This is a tribute to the fine throwing arms of Kachiyogi Berra of the Yankees and Adele Crandall of the Braves. Well, we're approaching a game time here in Milwaukee and a bright, sunny afternoon. And Lou Burdett has completed his warm-ups. Don Larson is still warming up for the Yankees. There go the Milwaukee Braves out of the field. Lou Burdett 
who's now going out to the mound, has the opportunity today to become the first pitcher in World Series history to win five games in two consecutive World Series. And uh, interestingly, uh, Lou pitched his first major league inning as a Yankee in Yankee Stadium in 1950 before being sent to San Francisco, from whom he was obtained by the Braves in 1951 in the Johnny Sandale. So we're getting set for baseball. Hank Bauer will be coming up to lead off for New York. You know, in these days of statistics, here's a fellow who's batting a thousand because he's made a hit every time that he's moved in front of the microphone. The voice of the Milwaukee Braves, Earl Gillespie. Thank you very much, Bob Wolf, and good afternoon, everybody. These two great ball clubs, the Yankees and the Braves, are battling this afternoon not only for the honor and glory of winning a world championship, but there's plenty at stake, plenty of money, because the difference in a winning and losing share amounts to about $3,000 per full share. So using an old sports cliche, the blue chips are down in Milwaukee County Stadium this afternoon. And a blue chip pitcher for Milwaukee, Lou Burdett, who was a loser in Monday's ball game at... Yankee Stadium comes back against New York this afternoon with only two days rest, and he'll be opposed by Don Larson, who was a great right-hander at Yankee Stadium on Saturday afternoon as he worked seven, hittings of, uh, seven innings of brilliant shutout baseball. Don Larson against Lou Burdett. We go to the top half of the first inning. The uh, Milwaukee outfield reads left to right. Wes Covington, Billy Bruton, and Henry Aaron. In the infield, Matthews, Logan, Shane Deanston, Torrey. Burdett on the mound and Del Crandall behind the plate. Hank Bauer leads off, one of the great stars of this 1958 series. Bauer is batting at 385. Ten base hits and 26 trips, including four homers, eight RBIs. And here is a strike, and this ball game is underway. Lou Burdett firing right down the alley. Strike one to count, and Hank Bauer, who will be followed by Gil McDougall and then Mickey Mantle. Outfield is playing deep to the left. The wind is blowing across the outfield. More towards left, though, as it crosses from the right field corner to the left field corner. Here's a drive to right field. Henry Aaron backing up, and he reaches up, makes the pass. Henry Aaron seems to misjudge that line drive for a second. One back, leap there, not leap, but he just reached up for the ball, and that's one away. Hard smash by Bauer to right field. Brings up second baseman Gil McDougall. And he was a great clutch performer yesterday as his home run on the top of the 10th inning broke a thrilling ball game open as the two teams had battled to a 2-2 two -two tie after nine. And McDougal smashed his second home run of the series to give the Yankees a 3-2 lead. They added one more to take a 4-2 lead. And they finally won out in a great ball game, 4-3. Gil McDougal batting at 304, right-handed batter. Seven hits in 23 times at bats. Lou Burdett comes down with a first pitch. McDougal swings, chops one down the third baseline. This is a foul ball picked up by Burdett. And it's a strike one count. McDougal in the series has one double, two home runs, and he has driven in four runs. A lot of left-handed swingers in there this afternoon, as Bob Wolf mentioned, for manager Fred Haney, with a switch hitter, Red Shane Deanst, Billy Bruton, Frank Torrey, Wes Covington, and Eddie Matthews. And Matthews has been dropped down by Fred Haney to the number six spot on the batting order. And in the past six years, I don't recall Matthews batting below fourth or fifth. Spike one count. Second baseman Gil McDougal in the batter's box. On deck, it is Mickey Mantle. Here is the windup. One man is out. The pitch cut on a ground ball through the box. Shortstop to his left. Has to hurry now. Up the throw to first base. He is out on a close play. Johnny Logan to Frank Torrey. On a ball that was hit to the right hand side of Luberdat. Not hired, and Logan had to hurry up to make the play on Gil McDougal. Brings up the center fielder, Mickey Mantle. Mickey, who's been up 20 times, has six base hits, batting at 300. He has one triple, two home runs, and three runs batted in. Two outs and nobody on base. Outfield about straight away and playing extremely deep for Mickey, who takes a fast strike that's right down the alley. Mantle hit both of his World Series home runs this year off Lou Burdett in the second ball game at Milwaukee County Stadium. Tremendous power.
from either side of the plate. He's batting left-handed against the right-hander. Two outs, nobody on base. And on deck, it's catcher Yogi Berra. Shane Deans is deep at second base. Torrey is deep at first. Strike one the count. Burdett has the sign, delivers, and here is an attempt at Bonnie. Missed the ball. It's strike two as Mickey Mantle with the Braves infield. Playing deep, try to drop one for a base hit. Missed the pitch. And it's a strike two count. Tremendous credit should go to this great Yankee ball club because after falling behind three games to one, they've stormed back in the last two ball games to tie the series at three and three. So history repeats because these two teams were tied at 3-3 last year going into the seventh ball game, of course. And it was both starters in 1957, Lou Burdett and Don Larson. Here's a swing and a roller down the first baseline. It's a fair ball picked up by Torrey. Steps on first base and the Yankees are three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And the score is New York nothing. Milwaukee is coming to bat. Well, the big one is underway. There's no tomorrow for these two great teams. And it's my last chance to remind you not to miss out on Gillette's World Series Special. A Gillette one-piece TV razor at the low price of 79 cents. Now just listen to what your 79 cents buys. A modern one-piece Gillette TV razor, a dispenser of Gillette blue blades, and a good-looking travel case. If you have an obsolete razor, or if you damage yours in one way or another, now's your chance to get a brand new Gillette TV razor for just 79 cents. What shaves you get? Brisk, refreshing shaves. Clean, comfortable shaves that keep you looking your level best. And the Gillette TV razor is so easy to use. You change blades with a twist of the handle and just a rinse cleans the razor. Get in on this money-saving offer today. A Gillette TV razor, dispenser of Gillette blue blades and styrene travel case while they last for just 79 cents. In the last half of the first inning, Milwaukee will send up Red Shandinst, Billy Bruton and Frank Torrey, three left-handed batters in a row to face the right-handed Don Larson. The Yankee outfield looks like this. Elston Howard in left. Mickey Mantle in center field, Hank Bauer in right field. Jerry Lumpy at third base, Tony Kubek at short, Gil McDougall at second base, and Bill Scourin at first base. Don Larson, who came up with nine victories against 60 feet during the regular American League season, has one victory and no losses this year in World Series competition, and he is being handled by one of the best, Yogi Berra. And uh, just like yesterday in the very first inning, with Whitey Ford starting with only two days rest. Manager Casey Stengel is going to have somebody keeping warm in the bullpen in right center field. A right-hander is throwing, just loosening up in the bullpen. Here is the pitch to Shane Deanst. And it's a swipe on the inside corner. The redhead batting left-handed against the right-hander. Now the right-hander out there is Johnny Cooks. Shane Deanst with a 320 batting average, has eight hits in 25 times at bat. Here is the pitch. He takes a strike on a beauty. It's on the outside corner above the knees, and it's strike two. Albert Red Shandings. He has been one of the truly great second basemen for the last decade in the National League. He has three doubles and a triple. No runs batted in his yet in the series. Outfield is playing him about straight away. The pitch is swung on a line drive. Left field. Base hit. Red Shandings, who sometimes looks like he's using a magic wand up at the plate, just broke that ball in the left field for a base hit. Hit number one off John Larson. Yogi Barris out yelling at John, saying, come on, let's bear down now, as the center fielder, Billy Bruton, steps into the batter's box. Billy, a left-handed batter, Six hits in 14 times at bat. One of the Braves' victories went to this young fella. The opening game against Ryan Duran, batting at 429. Larson's pitch, a swing of foul up the screen behind the plate, and it's strike one on Bruton. Billy has one home run and two runs batted in. Mel Allen. Got himself a baseball souvenir as that baseball rolled up the screen and right into the TV booth uh, down to our right. So it's a strike one count on Billy Bruton. 
As Mel would say, how about that? Runner on first base and nobody out. Here is a ball that's high. Ball one and strike one. Boy, we have a beautiful day for the seventh game. The temperature is 66 degrees. It is warm in the sun. Humidity is 82%. The wind is out of the southwest. Now looks like it's more out of the west, blowing out towards left field at eight miles an hour. Runner on first base, nobody out. Here's a lob throw by Larson over to Bill Scourin at first. Braves coaches, Billy Herman at third, Johnny Fitzpatrick at first. Lou Burdett against Don Larson. Larson into the stretch. Arms down at the belt. The pitch to Bruton, and he takes a ball. Looked like he was going to bunt. Ball two and strike one. As Billy squared around in the batter's box, one of the most adept bunters in the National League, the third baseman, Jerry Lumpy, came charging into the grass. Ball two and a strike one count. Center fielder, Billy Bruton. Last half of the first inning, no score. And Johnny Cooks continues throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Larson glancing over the left shoulder. Here's the 2-1 pitch, and it's ball three, too low, three and one. Ball three and a strike one count. Three and one on Billy Bruton, who is now out of the batter's box, searching as he looks down the third base line at Billy Herman, looking for that sign. Shall he hit? hit bunt, take. Ball three, strike one. We'll see in just a few seconds. Shane Dean sleeves off first. Nobody out. And the 3-1 pitch. Ball four. And Milwaukee moves into a serious threatening position here in the last half of the first inning. Trying to draw first blood and give Lubert at the lead. And Casey Stengel is on the dugout steps. And as Bob Wolf, who follows the Washington Ball Club in the American League, tipped this off before the series, is that Earl, when you see Casey with one foot up on the dugout steps, watch him closely because that pitcher out there hasn't got too much time left. Now we have another right-hander throwing in the bullpen in right center field. Bob Turley has joined the Johnny Cooks in the bullpen. Bob Turley and Johnny Cooks. Milwaukee runners perched on first and second base. Nobody out. Last half of the first inning. Frank Torrey. Left-handed batter facing right-handed Don Larson. The pitch to Frank. He bunts one down the third base line. of beauty. Picked up by Lumpy over to first. He is out. Now there was what you would call a perfect sacrifice because Torrey with runners on first and second base, one of that third baseman Lumpy to handle the ball, which leaves third base open, of course, because the shortstop covers second base. And Lumpy was forced to come in along the foul line to make the play, and he did. So there's a sacrifice for Torrey, and Milwaukee has runners on second and third base as the Braves cleanup hitter, right fielder Henry Aaron, moves into the batter's box. Aaron with eight hits and 24 times at bat, hitting at 333. Two doubles. Two runs batted in. The outfield deep to the left. Larson's pitch. Kerner breaks slow and outside. It's ball one. On deck is the left fielder, West Covington. The Braves have Shane Dean Stump third base. Bruton on second base. One man is out. No score. The last half of the first inning. The wind is blowing out towards left field. The wind up by Larson. The pitch. A swing and a miss. He tried to hold up, and it's ball one and strike one. Henry Aaron, full on a curveball, tried to hold back on his swing. Ball one and a strike one count. The Yankee infield is playing in for a play at the plate. The outfield deep to the left. Ball one, strike one count. One man is out. Runners on second and third base. As Larson starts the motion, the 1-1 one -one pitch is too low. Larson tried to get Aaron on that same type pitch, breaking pitch on the outside corner at the knees, but it broke below the knees, and it's ball two and strike one. Ball two and a strike one count. Boy, the weatherman must be out here today because we have perfect weather, and he must have planned it that way. The wind up by Don Larson. The pitch is too low, and it's ball three. Three and one, the count on Henry Aaron. A bad pitch now. Loads him up and brings up West Covington. 
And the right-handers, Bob Turley and Johnny Cooks, are throwing harder in the Yankee bullpen in deep right center field. Ball three and a strike one count. Larson, being very cautious with Henry Aaron, has gotten behind on the Braves' cleanup hitter. Ball three and strike one. Shane Dean's on third. Bruton on second base. One man is out. No score. The last half of the first. Larson starts his motion, kicks his leg, delivers, and it's ball four. Yogi Berra starts walking out towards Don Larson. This is walk number two issued by Larson. Casey Stengel is pacing up and down. Now he moves up to the second step in the Yankee dugout on the third base side. Decisions, decisions, boy. Those managers do quite a job day in and day out. Casey's got one right now. Shall he leave Larson in or go to his bullpen? Looks like he's going to leave Larson in. Here's Wes Covington, a left-handed batter with the bases jammed. The Yankee infield is playing back, hoping for a double play. One man is out. Bases loaded. The windup and the first pitch. Here's a swing and a foul back here towards us. And it's a split one count. Wes Covington, who has been up 22 times, has seven base hits. Batting at 318, no extra base hits, and three runs batted in. Shane Deanst on third, Bruton on second base, Henry Aaron on first base. One man is out. Larson takes a deep breath, has his sign, starts the motion. Here's the pitch. West Covington swings at the ground ball to the first baseman, picks it up, and a run scores as Covington is out at first base. Good play by Scowron. fine play by Bill Scour, and that was a tough chance as he played the ball on a short hop, moving to his right. Fairly hard hit, bouncing high. A run scores. Runners go to second and third. Here is Eddie Matthews. Eddie Matthews getting a fine ovation from the Milwaukee fans here at County Stadium. He's had one of those really rough series. Four hits in 24 times at bat. He has established a no individual strikeout record, having gone down 11 times on strikes. Batting a 167, but he has two doubles and has driven in three runs. And he's going to receive a walk. It'll bring up Del Crandall. With first base open, Matthews is being walked intentionally. We'll have to wait till Crandall gets up to see how the strategy will pan out for Casey Stengel. There is ball two outside. Billy Bruton on third base. Henry Aaron on second base. Del Crandall waiting on deck as ball three is poured outside. Ball three and no strikes. Another bad pitch out wide. We'll put Matthews on first base. Here's Larson's pitch outside the barra. Ball four. intentional walk. So here in the last half of the first inning, Milwaukee has scored one run on just one hit, three walks, a sacrifice, and a ground ball to deep first base. Once again, Milwaukee has the bases loaded. The batter is catcher Del Crandall. Five hits in 21 trips, batting at 238. Two runs batted in, no extra base hits. Not far behind Matthews in strikeouts with a total of nine. Open stance. The outfield deep to the left. Here is the pitch. There's a swing and a ground ball foul down that third baseline, and it's strike one. And this is a right-handed power hitter's win today, blowing out towards left field. Strike one the count on catcher Del Crandall. Don Larson comes down with the next pitch. A swing and a miss, and it's strike two. Larson bearing down. He's in a real rough situation. And so far has done a magnificent job with only one run scoring. The Braves have the bases loaded with one out. 
have managed just one run. Two men are out now. Strike two count on Crandall. The pitch. Here is strike three and a beauty. Fastball on the outside corner, belt high, and great pitching by Don Larson. In the last half of the first inning, one run, one hit, no errors. Three men were left on base. And at the end of the first inning, the score is Milwaukee 1, the New York Yankees nothing. In short supply. So hurry and get her. Get your Gillette TV razor. Go get one fast and be in luck for 79 cents instead of a buck. Yogi Berra leads off for the Yankees in the top half of the second. And incidentally, when Crandall was called out in strikes, that marked the tenth time that Dell has struck out in the series. One behind Eddie Matthews, who has 11 strikeouts, which is a World Series record. Also, the Braves now as a team have 54 strikeouts, which is also a World Series record. A dubious one, but it is a record. Yogi Berra. Five for 23, batting at 217, has two doubles and two runs batted in. Barra, Elston Howard, and Jerry Lumpy, the first three men to face right hander Lou Burdett in the second. The pitch to Barra is over, but it's low, and it's ball one and no strikes. Ball one, no strike count. The uh, Milwaukee outfield plays Barra just a shade towards right. The infield is deep, with the exception of third baseman Eddie Matthews, who's just a step off the infield grass, about even with the bag, and about 15 feet off the line. Ball one, no strike count on Barra. As Burdett delivers, Yogi takes ball two. It's high, two and nothing. Ball two, no strikes. And now Yogi wanted... Umpire Tom Gorman will look over the baseball, which he does. A new baseball goes into Lou Burdett. Ralph Houck is coaching at first base, and Frank Crosetti at third base. Here's the 2-0 pitch, and it's high. Ball three, three and nothing. Burdett in the series has now worked 15 to one-third innings. Has walked only two Yankees. But he's way behind on Barra. Three and nothing. Here is a strike poured right down the alley. It's ball three and strike one. Ball three and a strike one count. Nobody on base. Nobody out. And there is ball four. Barra draws a walk. First walk given up by Lubert. And incidentally... Those other two walks before this one to Yogi Berra, issued by Burdett on the series, both were intentional walks. So this is the first unintentional pass issued by Lou in this series. Barra's on first base, representing the tying run in the ball game. Nobody is out. The batter is left fielder Elston Howard. Howard batting at 133, has two hits and 15 times at bat, and he takes a strike. Howard, going into yesterday's game, had been hitless in ten times at bat, came up with two hits, including a very important base hit in the tenth inning. Strike one count. On deck is third baseman Jerry Lumpy. The outfield plays Elston Howard towards left. The infield about straight away. The pitch, and he's going to bunt when it's down the first baseline. Torrey feeling the ball, tossing the Bernardo, drops the ball. And here is the runner going to third base now as the runner holds it first. Torrey to Lou Bernardo, drops the ball. That'll be scored as a sacrifice. A sacrifice for Elston Howard, moving Barrett to second base. And the error by Torrey on the toss to Burdett, which was high and a little behind him. Yeah. 
moved Yogi Berra around the third base. And now we have action in the Milwaukee bullpen. And this is the rookie right-hander, 27-year-old Carl Willey. Nobody is out. The Yankees have the tying run on third base, the lead run on first base, and the batter is third baseman Jerry Lumpy. Lumpy, who has been up nine times, has two base hits, batting at 222. Both singles. Left-handed swinger. Burdett tugs at his cap. Looks down at Del Crandall. Milwaukee's outfield shortens up and is playing around towards left. Pitch is a little high, and it's ball one and no strikes. Ball one, no strike count. Carl Willey, who has made one appearance in this series, and that was in the fifth ball game at Yankee Stadium, working one inning, is warming up in the bullpen for manager Fred Haney. Willie, who hails from Cherryfield, Maine. Ball one, no strikes. On Lumpy, the left-handed batter, Jerry takes ball two. It's too low, and it's two and nothing. Ball two, and no strikes the count. Now the third base coach, Frank Crosetti, checks with Casey Stengel, then goes through a series of signs to Jerry Lumpy. As Lumpy has moved out in front of Luberdet, ball two, no strikes. On deck is first baseman Bill Scourin. Runners lead off first and third base. Nobody out. The 2-0 and pitch. A swing and a ground ball to the first baseman. The runner is... Not going to score, and Burnett drops the throw from Frank Torrey, and the bases are loaded. Yogi Berra came down the third base line as Torrey coming in for that little ground ball. Picked it up, thought that Berra was going to try to score, moved up the throw to the plate. Berra went back to third base, then he tossed to Lou Burnett. On a tough play, and Burnett dropped the throw. Another error is charged to Torrey, and the bases are loaded. Nobody is out. Torrey, who was fooled that time by Yogi Berra's move down the third baseline. And the Yankees have loaded the bases on a walk, a sacrifice, and a couple of errors. Bill Scar on the batter. Milwaukee leads, one to nothing, but New York has the tying run on third base, the lead run on second base. And here is a dangerous long ball hitter, Bill Scowron, with that wind blowing out to left field. Scowron batting at 217. One homer and three runs batted in. Five hits and 23 times at bat. This guy is really strong. The infield is playing back for the double play, and the pitch is too low, and it's ball one. On the two errors here in the top half of the second, it marks six errors for the Braves in the last two days, as they have had four yesterday. All one and no strikes. Scouring in the batter's box, Tony Kubek on deck. Burdett in real hot water, just as Larson was in the last half of the first inning. Burdett starts it in the motion. Here's the one and no pitch, and Scouring swings and fouls when down the third base side, it's even up at ball one and strike one. Ball one, strike one count. Burdett with that natural sinker. Trying to keep that ball low, so... Scourin will hit the ball into the dirt. Eddie Matthews is about even with the bag at third base. Torrey is in a little bit at first base, while Logan and Shane Deanster are deep, hoping for a double play ball. Nobody is out. Bases loaded. Here's the 1-1 pitch, and there is strike two call. Strike two the count. Ball one, strike two on Scourin. Burdett looking down at Crandall, though, who takes his time, fidgets on the mound. Down to the rising sack, throws it down. Ball one and strike two. 
Outfield playing scour and deep towards left field. Here's the windup. And Burdett's one and two pitches, a ball inside, and Crandall is really angry. Here comes Burdett down off the mound. They thought they had Scourin on the inside corner pitch, but umpire Tom Gorman says, nope, that missed the inside corner, and it's even a two and two. Boy, and Crandall was really red hot for a few seconds. Ball two, strike two. We're in the top half of the second. Yankees trail one nothing, but New York has the bases jam-packed and nobody is out. Scourin up there with a count of ball two, strike two. Burdett has the sign, the motion. 2-2 two -two pitch, a swing and a ground ball to the shortstop. Here's the pike to second base out. Over to first base, it's going to be close. He is safe and the run scores. Scourin forcing... Jerry Lumpy at second base and a close play at first. As Scowin drives in his fourth run of the series. The Yankees have scored without a base hit here in the second. One man is out. Yankee runners on first and third base. Score is tied at one and one. And Tony Kubek is the batter. And Crandall is out talking to Luberdet. Kubek, who's been up 19 times, has one hit. Batting 0-53. Don Larson, due to hit next. And Larson is a very good hitting pitcher. Yankee runners perched on first and third. One out. One run across the plate. Burdett checks with his catcher. Into the stretch. Here is the pitch, and Kubek swings it to drive the left field. Covington's going back. He stops, makes the catch, runner tags. Here is the lead run, scoring as the peg goes to second base. Yankees lead 2-1. to one. A sacrifice fly for Tony Kubek. As Elston Howard tagged the third base and scored after the catch, and a well-hit ball by Kubek. And the Yankees have a two-to-one lead. They've scored two runs without a base hit here in the second. A walk, a couple of errors, a fielder's choice, and a sacrifice fly. Runner on first base, two outs. Don Larson, the batter. He's been up once in the series, 0 for 1. Outfield playing Larson around to the left as Lou Burdett gets his sign. Scourin leads off first base. The pitch is in too close, and it's ball one. Ball one, no strikes. Burdett again down to the rosin sack. Yankees have taken a 2-1 lead, and the crowd here in Milwaukee has grown extremely quiet. The pitch, a swing and a ground ball to the third baseman's left. Logan has the ball to throw to second base. Force play, and that retires the side. Larson forcing Scourin at second base. Logan to Shane Deans. Two runs, no hits, two errors. One man was left on base. And the score is New York 2 and Milwaukee 1. Hey, don't tell everybody. Tell you why. Because Gillette only has a limited supply of Gillette TV razors. Dig this price, just 79 cents, so take this advice. Shh. And hurry, 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 get one fast, your Gillette TV razor while they last. WGY, WGFM Schenectady. The Braves will lead off with their shortstop, Johnny Logan, in the last half of the second. Logan, Burdett, and Shane Deans to face right-hander Don Larson, and now goes to work with a one-run lead as the score is New York 2 and Milwaukee 1. And we have most of the clouds away from Milwaukee County Stadium area. We have blue skies overhead, and a bright sun is shining. Logan with three hits and 21 times at bat, batting a 143. Two doubles, and uh, two runs batted in. The outfield is playing Johnny around towards left. 
The infield is around. Here is the windup by Larson. First pitch. A swing and a pop-up left side of the infield. Tony Kubek drifting back. He's there. He makes the catch, and that is one away. Logan pops out. Three runs have scored in this ball game. Only one base hit. For the Yankees, two runs and no hits. Milwaukee, one run and one hit. Here's a great hand for Loberdet. Burdett has one hit in six times at bat, and that was a three-run home run here in the second game of the series at Milwaukee County Stadium, batting 167 with that home run and three RBIs. One man is out. Larson comes down with the first pitch, loose swings. It's a ground ball to the third baseman, Jerry Lumpy up. Over to first base. He is out. That's two away. Two up, two down. And here is the only man on either side who has a base hit. Red Shandings with a single left in the first inning came around to score Milwaukee's run. And the redhead got his base hit on a strike two pitch. As he just poked that ball to left field. Red uses a short bat. And despite its shortness, he even goes up on the handle almost to the trademark. Takes a strike on the inside corner. Strike one. Two outs. Nobody on base. Last half of the second. Yankees lead two to one. Don Larson. Shakes off a sign. Gets one he likes. A one pitch. Blowing inside. Ball one strike one on Shane Deanst. Red out of the batter's box. Red had really one of those tough seasons this year. Suffered a broken finger. Had pleurisy. The severe cold followed him for three, four weeks during the regular season. Here's the 1-1 pitch. There's a swing and a ground ball to the second baseman's right. Over is McDougald. Up over to first base. He is out retiring the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. And the score at the end of the second inning is the Yankees 2, Milwaukee 1. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp and listen, mister, how are you fixed for blades? Do you have plenty? How are you fixed for blades? You better check. Please make sure you have enough, cause a worn out blade makes shaving mighty tough. How are you fixed for blades? top half of the third, the Yankees out in front 2-1 on the top of the batting order for New York. Hank Bauer, Gil McDougal, and Mickey Mantle will be the first three men to face right-hander Lou Burdett. Looking out at that scoreboard and seeing the Yankees with two runs and no hits reminds me that a couple of years ago, while pitching a really great ball game at Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia, Lou Burdett lost a one-hitter. One to nothing. So he has had some Tough things happened to him in his baseball career. That was one that he'll always remember. Just missed a no-hitter in the ball game. Hank Bauer lined out to the right fielder, Henry Aaron, in the first inning. Hit the ball right on the nose. Henry going back at the last second, sort of lunged, caught the ball for the first out of the ball game. So here is Bauer stepping in. Hank, who now has 10 hits and 27 times at bat in the series. And the outfield is playing him around towards left. Burdett takes his time. Starts into the rocking motion, kicks his left leg, and the first pitch is a little high. Ball one and no strikes. Ball one, no strike count on Hank Bauer. Burdett was complaining on the pitch. Bauer out of the batter's box, steps in, pulls down that plastic helmet. Braves talk it up in the infield. Lou Burdett into the motion, the 1-0 and pitch is swung on a ground ball to the shortstop, left Logan over, grabs it, throws to first, he is out. And that's one away in the third, brings up second baseman Gil McDougald. McDougal was thrown out by shortstop Johnny Logan in the first inning. 
Right-handed batter digs in with the right foot. Now he moves around, smoothing out the dirt in the batter's box. And uh, steps away from the plate to knock the dirt off his spike shoes. And these ball players have very noticeable and sometimes unusual nervous habits in the field and at the plate. One out, nobody on base. Curve breaks too low. Ball one, no strikes. Gil McDougal, who's come on strong the last couple of ball games. And going into this one, Gil was batting at 304. And he's had some very, very important base hits. Has driven in four runs for the Yankees. Ball one and no strikes. And a curve strike is called on the outside corner knee high. It's even at one and one. Ball one, strike one. Milwaukee scored a run in the last half of the first. The Yankees bounced back with two runs in the second. Two to one the score, top half of the third. Braves outfield plays McDougal the pull. They're playing him around towards left field. Aaron has shortened up a couple of steps in right. Shane Deans at second base is lined up with right center field and playing deep. Here's a drive deep left. Going back is coming in towards the wall on the run. It's out there for extra bases. McDougal rounding first base on his way to second goes in with a stand-up double. Line smash deep left center field by Gil McDougal. And there is the first base hit off Lou Burdett. And we're going to get action now in the Milwaukee bullpen. McDougal on second base. The batter is Mickey Mantle. Mantle who went out to Frank Torrey in the first inning. Twenty-seven-year-old right-hander. Carl Willie is warming up for manager Fred Haney in the bullpen for Milwaukee. One around second base. One man is out. Burdett looking down at Del Crandall. Goes into the stretch. And the pitch to Mantle is a fast strike. It's right down the alley across the letters. Strike one called. First half of the third. New York with a runner in scoring position on second base. McDougal as he picks up his second double of the series. And his eighth base hit. The Braves outfield with Mickey Mantle batting is playing straight away but very deep. So is the infield. And the 0-1 pitch. Here's a swing and a miss on a changeup and it's strike two. Strike two count. Mickey Mantle steps out of the batter's box. Gil McDougal is yelling something over to Frank Crosetti. At third base. Gil takes his lead off second base with one man out. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And it's just outside a ball. Ball one and strike two. Mickey Mantle, who was born at Spavano, Oklahoma, now lives in Commerce, Oklahoma. 26 years old, one of the game's great stars. Facing a fidgety right-hander, Lou Burdett. Lou in a tough spot here in the top half of the third. Ball one and strike two, one out, and McDougal at second base. On deck, it's Yogi Berra. Burdett takes a lot of time between pitches. He's ready. The one and two pitch. It's in too close, and it's ball two and strike two. Mantle pulled his body away from an inside pitch. Ball two, strike two. Boy, that wind has shifted somewhat here in the first couple of innings because right now it's blowing right out towards left field from home plate. It was slightly across outfield from right to left at the beginning of the ball game. Mantle has call a time. Mickey's out of the batter's box. Steps in, gets set. Ball two, strike two. McDougal with that leadoff second base. One man is out. Here's the stretch. And the 2-2 pitch. A swing and a ground ball to the third base. And Matthew stabs the ball up over to first base. He is out. That mantle can really move down that first base line. Boy, has he got speed. Eddie Matthews with a sparkling play to his left. And he looked the runner back in the second base and then suddenly realized this was Mickey Mantle. 
whom they claim is the fastest man in baseball from home plate to first base. And he really wound up and fired a strike over to Frank Torrey, getting Mickey by about a step. And McDougal remained on second base. Now the batter is Yogi Berra, who started a two-run rally in the second with a walk. The first unintentional walk that Burdett has given up in the series. Runner on second base. Left-handed batter Yogi Berra looks at ball one. It's outside. Ball one, no strike count. Berra waving his bat around, watching Burdett as Lou goes through that... Uh, all those motions he has out there in the mound, trying to throw these hitters off stride, making them wait... Gil McDougal on second, two outs, top half of the third, Yankees lead, two to one. Ball one, no strikes on Yogi Berra. Burdett comes down with a pitch, here's a swing of miss. And McDougal was way off second base, Crandall was going to fire out there, but Logan, who was deep at short, had no chance to get in behind Gill, and he raced back into second base. Crandall has one of the finest throwing arms in baseball behind the plate, and he was ready to really fire, but had no chance with nobody covering second. Ball one, strike one count. Here's the pitch, and Berra takes the ball to tie. Yogi Berra, who was born in St. Louis, Missouri, now 33 years old, lives in Tenafly, New Jersey during the offseason. Barra as little as catchers go, 5'8", 192 pounds, but boy, he packs a wallop. Runner on second base. Two men are out. Burdett trying to get himself out of this hot water in the third. Lose into the stretch. Here's the 2-1 pitch. There's a swing and a foul back towards the uh, press box. Bounces high, and down the screen it goes. Ball two, strike two. Gil McDougal at second base smashed a long double deep left center field for the first base hit off Luberdet. Bauer had grounded out to short, and after the double by McDougal, Mickey Mantle was tossed out by Matthews. Now it's ball two, strike two on Yogi Berra with two away. Luberdet shrugs his shoulders up on the rubber. Here's the 2-2 pitch and a swing and a hard smash to Torrey. Picks it up and he's going to beat him the bag. Good play. He's out retiring the side. Good pitching by Luberdeck. No runs, one hit, no errors. One man was left. And the score is New York 2, Milwaukee 1. You know, fan census figures show that our great country is growing at an amazing rate. By 1960, our population will be close to 180 million. What bright opportunities lie ahead for all of us? Because this growth means a demand for more homes, more highways, and more schools. This, in turn, means more factories are needed to meet the constantly rising demand for new products and more people to run the new industries. Yes, sir, there's a new and greater wave of opportunity coming. So get all the exciting facts about our changing America. Send for the free booklet, Your Great Future in a Growing America. Right box 1776, Grand Central Station, New York 17, New York. WGY, WGFM Schenectady. Trevor the third, Milwaukee will lead off with Billy Bruton. He'll be followed by Frank Torrey and then Henry Aaron. Bruton, who walked in the first inning, left-handed batter walking up towards home plate as the Yankees toss the ball around the infield. set now. Milwaukee trailing 2-1. to one. Seventh game of the series. This is it. Billy Bruton looking out at Don Larson. Larson has a sign from Yogi Berra. Here's the pitch and there's a swing at him. Line drive. Center field. Base hit. Billy Bruton lines a single to center field. That is hit number two off Don Larson. Tying one on first base. Nobody is out. The batter is first baseman Frank Torrey. Frank, who laid down a perfect sacrifice bunt in the first inning. 
Another southpaw hitter. And the Yankee bullpen becomes alive as Bob Turley, a right-hander, and Bobby Shantz, a southpaw, begin throwing. Larson's first pitch. A swing and a high fly ball. Short right field. McDougal going back. Here's Bauer racing in. And Gil McDougal makes a fine over the shoulder catch. Hank Bauer was really turning those legs. And McDougal going back. Peeked at Hank, then realized that Bauer might have trouble. Made a very fine catch over the shoulder. And that is one out. Rooting on first base. Here is right fielder Henry Aaron. Aaron walked in the first inning. The absence of the long ball by the noted long ball hitters has hurt Milwaukee in the series. None of the power boys down the middle have found the range. In the previous six games, here is a strike to Aaron. The only two home runs by Milwaukee by Lou Burdett and by Billy Bruton. And they came in the second game of the series. While the Yankees have pounded out nine home runs. Runner on first base with one out. Here is a ball that's low. It's even up on Aaron at ball one and strike one. We're in the last half of the third at Milwaukee County Stadium. The Yankees lead the Braves two to one. Ball one, strike one count. Don Larson has his sign as Bruton jumps off first base. Here's the peg over to first. Boy, this Yankee outfield is giving Aaron a lot of singles territory. They're playing extremely deep and around to the left. Here's the 1-1 pitch. A swing of line drive. Left field. Base hit. Going over is Elston Howard. Picks it up as Bruton rounds second base and holds up. Peg goes into second base. Henry Aaron hangs a close liner type single to left field. Hit number three off. Larson and Casey Stengel has called the time. He is walking out towards the mound. That might be all for Larson. Bobby Shantz, a left-hander, and Bob Turley, a right-hander, have been throwing in that bullpen off and on since the first inning. Wes Covington standing off to the right of the plate, and it might well be that Casey will go to the left-hander. Now I think he's signaled for the right-hander. Let's see, he's called in the second base umpire, Al Barlick, and it's going to be the right-hander. Bob Turley is being motioned in from the bullpen in deep right center field. While Bob gets all set for that long walk in, let's pause 30 seconds for station identification. When you shop for a mixer, remember Saratoga Vichy is the real Vichy. The Saratoga Vichy company does not make Vichy, they bottle it right from the pure waters of the Vichy Spring. Get the yellow label, yellow label, yellow label, yellow label. Saratoga Vichy, the real Vichy. WGY Schenectady. Folks, prepare for the dangerous winter driving ahead. Buy safe Goodyear Suburbanite winter tires with the lifetime guarantee. From Albert E. Oliver Incorporated, Albany, New York. Bob Turley who was given a lot of consideration before the ball game as Casey Stengel's likely starter. But Casey went to Don Larson, who had four days rest, instead of Bob Turley, who, by the way, worked yesterday in the 10th inning and did a fine job getting Frank Torrey out of there with a tying one on third base and runners on first and third. Now moves in from the bullpen. He's a big right-hander coming in, and he makes his fourth appearance in the series. Bob Turley stands 6'2", weighs 215 pounds. Here's a hand for Don Larson. Don Larson, about five steps now from the Yankee dugout, moving in there, worked two and one-third innings. So far has allowed one run. And I say so far because if Bruton or Aaron or Bruton and Aaron score, their runs will be charged to Larson's record. He worked two and one-third, has given up one run so far, three hits, three walks, and he had one strikeout. 
Bob Turley is actually in an unusual role in the last two games in this series because uh, during the 58 American League season, he was used almost exclusively as a starter. He started 31 times out of his 33 appearances. So actually, Casey only used him twice during the regular season in relief. But here he is right now in the biggest ball game of the year with Milwaukee runners on first and second base, West Covington in the batter's box. West grounded out to the first baseman in the first inning, driving in a run. He was up there with the bases jammed and one away, and now Turley steps back off the rubber as West Covington moves out of the batter's box. West calls for the rosin sack. One man is out. The outfield deep and straight away. On deck is third baseman Eddie Matthews. Tying run on second base, the Yankees lead. Two to one, the pitch is low and inside. A slow breaking curveball. It's ball one and no strikes. Ball one, no strikes on West Covington. Yankee pitching has been brilliant, you would say, in this series because they really have the book on these power hitters of Milwaukee. Here is the one and oh pitch. There's a swing and a little chop out in front of the plate. Yogi Berra picks it up and throw to first base. He is out. Here's a throw across the third base. Bruton hooks back in as Jerry Lumpy makes a great save and a bad throw. Jerry Lumpy just made a spectacular save and a bad throw by Bill Scourin. Bruton had rounded third base. Scourin saw him about 15 feet from third, fired across. Lumpy went diving across into foul territory, making a beautiful stab. That's two away. Runners on second and third base. Eddie Matthews, the batter. Eddie came up in the same situation in the first inning and was walked intentionally with first base open. So now let's see what the Yankees' strategy will be. As the Braves have Bruton on third, Aaron on second base. That play, by the way, on West Covington has scored two to three if you score by numbers at home. Yogi Berra to Bill Scourin. Little chop down the first base line. Now, Barra's out talking to the pitcher, Bob Turley, and second baseman Gil McDougal. Conference over, and Turley checks now with the Yankee bench, looking in at the old professor, Casey Stengel. They're going to walk Eddie Matthews, I think. Yes, Yogi Berra is pointing down the first base line. Now holds out his hands. What do you want, Case? And finally, he said, let's put him on. First base is open. It'll bring up Del Crandall. Here is a ball outside. Eddie Matthews receiving his second intentional walk. Runners on second and third. Casey Stengel. Going to percentages here for the second time with Matthews. Eddie's had one of those so so series with four hits and 24 times at bat. And being the hitter he is, he is about due to break out of it. And so, Case with those runners in scoring position and the chance to uh, set up a force situation at any bag in the infield, and also plus the fact that he'll have the right handed hitter Crandall facing the right handed Turley, is putting Matthews on first. There's ball four. First walk given up by Bob Turley. Now here is catcher Del Crandall who has called out on strikes in the first inning. Del is batting for the second time in a row with a bases jam. Two men are out. Last half of the third, the Yankees lead 2-1 to one in the ball game. Bob Turley has his sign from Yogi Berra. The pitch to Crandall, and it's a breaking pitch. Low and outside, and that's ball one. Bob Turley, 215-pound right-hander from Troy, Illinois. Living now in Lutherville, Maryland. And takes that deep breath. Delivers, and a swing and a hard shot. He's by the pitcher. And fast McDougal barehands the ball to first. He's out of that great play by Gil McDougal. A barehanded pickup to retire the side. 
That play is scored one to four to three. No runs. Two hits. No errors. And again, three men were left on base. And the end of the third, the score is the New York Yankees two and Milwaukee one. Hello there, everybody. I'm Mel Allen with a giant offer from Papermate that tops them all. Listen, how'd you like a genuine Papermate pen free? How'd you like a genuine Papermate refill free? Sound good? Well, that's exactly what you get. Free pen, free refill. When you buy Papermate's famous two-tone pen at the regular $1.69 price. What a bargain. As it says right on the special Papermate display, you get a two-tone pen worth $1.69, plus an extra silver tip refill worth 49 cents, plus a retractable schoolmate utility pen worth 39 cents. A two fifty seven value, all three for only a dollar sixty nine. How about that? A two fifty seven value for only a dollar sixty nine. Look for the special papermate display at stores everywhere. Buy your two tone pen at regular price. Get an extra pen, an extra refill, free from papermate. This sensational offer is limited, so hurry and get your free papermate pen and free refill now. The Yankees have stranded two runners in three innings. Milwaukee has stranded six. Elston Howard leads off. In the top half of the fourth inning, it'll be Howard, Jerry Lumpy, and Bill Scourin. Elston was waving a couple of bats around. Now throws the leaded bat away. Moves up towards home plate as Lou Burdett loosening up is tossing down to Harry Hannabrink as Crandall was getting on the catching paraphernalia. Dell hit a line shot. That Turley deflected... And slowed down quite a bit. McDougal racing in made a real blue chip play as he came in with a bare hand, a do or die shot, and got Crandall by a couple of steps at first base with the tying run crossing home plate. But it didn't count, and the Yankees maintain that two to one edge. Elston Howard, sacrificed in the second, was safe at first base on an error by Frank Torrey. And here's Howard now in the batter's box. Loberdet has the sign, and the first pitch to Howard is cut on foul back towards the screen, and it's a strike one count. Little puffs of dirt have been skimming around the infield as we get some wind out here. But on the whole, it is one of the finest days we've had for any of the other six ball games. Here's the 0-1 pitch. There is a ball outside. It's ball one and strike one. Ball one and strike one, and Elston Howard. Slightly close stance. Howard stands with his feet fairly close together. Holds his bat on the end as Lou Burdett again goes through the motions out there. Lou now is staring down at the ground on the mound. Has the sign. The 1 1 pitch, a swing and a drive in the right field. It's in there for a base hit. Over is Henry Aaron, picks it up, fires the ball back into Red, Shane Deanst. Bounced away from Red, picked up by Logan, and that is hit number two off Lou Burdett. A sliced single, well tagged in the right field by Elston Howard. Brings up the third baseman, Jerry Lumpy. Lumpy was safe on an error by Torrey in the second inning. Left-handed batter with a runner on first base and nobody out. The Braves scored a run in the first. The Yankees bounce back with two in the second. Two to one the score. Top half of the fourth inning. Howard on first base. Nobody out. The pitch is a strike as Lumpy was going to bunt. And that curveball snapped in there on the inside corner knee high. No ball. One strike count. Lumpy was going to try to sacrifice that runner on to second base. Takes the lead. Here is the pitch. He's hitting away. A swing and miss. Nobody covering second base. The throw is knocked down by Logan, and nobody was covering second base. On the pitch, Howard was on the go. Crandall fired a good throw to second base. 
nobody was covering. Logan got over at the last second and knocked the ball down, so it wouldn't go into center field. Howard is on second. And let's see how they score that now. They haven't flashed it up as yet. They're having trouble with the lights at the side at this moment out there in the scoreboard in right center field. Here is a stretch in the pitch. He's going to bond takes a ball. It's outside and it's ball one or ball two and strike. Well now they've changed the scoreboard around to ball one and strike two. Ball one and strike two on Jerry Lumpy. Elston Howard in scoring position on second base with nobody out. Outfield is shaded slightly to the right. Here's the pitch to Lumpy, and there's a swing and a ground ball to the third base. The Matthews in, picks it up. Here's the throw to first base. He gets him. And Howard remains on second base. There was a high chopper to third baseman Eddie Matthews. One man is out. The batter first baseman Bill Scourin. Scourin safe in the fielder's choice in the second. Drove in a run with his ground ball to the shortstop, Johnny Logan, as the Braves tried for a double play but missed at first base. Forcing the runner at second base. Blue Burdett's first pitch. A swing and a fly ball. Center field. Bruton back there, and he comes in a couple of steps. Makes the catch. Howard tags at second. Goes back in as Billy fires a long throw. That got away from Eddie Matthews and a perfect strike with the ball bounced crazily to Eddie's right. And Howard remained on second base. So that's two outs as Scourin flies to Bruton in center. And here's a left-handed batter, shortstop Tony Kubek. Hit a line shot to fairly deep left field in the second for a sacrifice fly that scored Howard from third base. And he is getting a walk. It'll bring up Bob Turley. An intentional walk to the left-handed batting Tony Kubek. Ball two is outside. Bob Turley. Incidentally, going back on that play at second base, Howard receives credit for a stolen base. So there is the Yankees' first stolen base in the series. Ball four to Kubek, and Tony moves down the first base line. Second walk given up by Burdett. An intentional walk, and the Yankees have runners at first and second as Turley steps into the batter's box. Turley has one hit in three times at bat. Two runs batted in. He's batting at 333. Into the stretch goes Burdett. He delivers, and there's a swing and a ground ball to the shortstop. Logan over, has the ball, throws to second base, and a force play retires the side. Larson forcing Kubek at second base. Logan is Shane Deans. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two men left on base, and the score is New York 2 and Milwaukee 1. Well, the sparkling relief pitching of Dittmar, Duran, and Turley capture the headlines in yesterday's game. But here's some late news from Gillette. Their sensational World Series special is selling like crazy. Some stores have completely sold out. Don't you miss out on this wonderful bargain. For just 79 cents, you get a precision-engineered one-piece Gillette razor, a dispenser of Gillette blue blades, and a streamlined travel case. With the Gillette TV razor, you get the most in shaving luxury. Clean, refreshing shaves with speed and ease. You save time when you shave, too. Gillette's one-piece construction means instant blade changing and rinsing. And those double edges spell real shaving economy. If you haven't had a chance to catch up with this terrific bargain, better do so in a hurry. Remember, it's good only while the supply lasts. Gillette TV razor, dispenser of Gillette blue blades and compact travel case, just 79 cents. Bob Turley has just started his warm-up throws. He was the last man to bat in the fourth inning, so it took his time moving out towards the mound. He'll face Logan Burdett and Shane Deans in the last half of the fourth as the Yankees lead 2-1. And in case you're just joining us around the country, 
Uh, the Yankees scored two runs in the second on no hits. They had a walk, a couple of errors by Milwaukee, a fielder's choice, and a sacrifice fly driving in the runs. After the Braves had scored a run on only one base hit in the last half of the first inning. So it is New York 2, Milwaukee 1, as we move on to the last half of the fourth. Final game of the series, all tied at 3-3. Three and three. Just the way these teams went to battle in the seventh game last year. Logan popped out to the shortstop in the second. Bob Turley is ready. Rubs the shine off the baseball now, sets his cap. Looks down at Yogi Berra. The Yankee outfield plays Logan to pull the ball around to the left. And the first pitch is swung on. There's a high fly ball right center field. Barra's coming in hard. Now he's slowing up. Makes the cat rather Bauer. And that is one away. Johnny Logan flies to Hank Bauer in right center field. Brings up the pitcher. Louverdet, who was tossed out by Jerry Lumpy in the second. Louverdet to face Bob Turley. Turley came on replacing starter Don Larson in the last half of the third after Larson had worked uh, two and one third innings, allowing one run on three hits, walked three, and he struck out one. Braves have not managed the safety as yet of Bob Turley. Last half of the fourth inning. Burdett leveling the bat across the plate, watching Turley as Bob has the sign, comes down with the first pitch, fastball is high and outside, it's ball one and no strikes. Big 21 game winner for the Yankees this year. Bob Turley had 21 wins, only seven losses. Here's a swing and a miss. Even up on Lou Burdett at ball one and strike one. And Turley also turns in a sparkling earned run average 2.98 in working 245 innings for the Yankees. 1-1 one, one pitch, slow curve is high. The Burdett ball two, strike one. The grandstand shadow now has extended to where it has reached halfway between the mound and the plate. 2-1 pitch. Ball three just misses the outside corner and Turley's down off the mound now. Ball three and strike one on Burdett. Red Shandings in the on-deck circle. Last half of the fourth inning. Turley has the sign, and the pitch is a spike call. It's now a full count, three and two. All three and strike two on the pitcher, Burdett. Turley. Kicks his leg and delivers. There's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. That is the first strikeout for Bob Turley, number two in the ball game for Milwaukee and the Braves. 55th strikeout of the series. And each strikeout against Milwaukee this afternoon establishes a new World Series record. Two up and two down in the last half of the fourth inning. So Turley now goes on to face the top of the batting order. Second baseman Red Shandings to a single the left. Scored Milwaukee's lone run in the first inning and grounded out to the second baseman. There's a swing and a chopper to the shortstop over Skubek up the throw to first base. He is out at first retiring the side. Milwaukee three up and three down for the second time in the ball game. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And at the end of the fourth inning, the score is New York 2, Milwaukee 1. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp and listen, mister, how are you fixed for blades? Do you have plenty? How are you fixed for blades? You better check. We go to the top half of the fifth inning. The top of the batting order will face Lou Burdett, Hank Bauer, Gil McDougall, and Mickey Mantle. 
Yankees on in front, two to one. Burdett just completing his warm-up throws. Shane Dean standing at second base, waiting for the throw from Del Crandall. Well, after a long but a very wonderful baseball season, a total of about 186 games for both these teams, including exhibition games this spring and six games in the World Series, and the regular 154-game schedule, the World's Championship in baseball will be decided in one game. And this is it, the big one. As the Yankees have stormed from behind, the Braves had a three-game-to-one lead over New York. Hank Bauer in the batter's box has lined the right field, and he has grounded out to the shortstop. Bauer hit less than two times at bat, and Burdett's first pitch is just outside. Ball one, no strikes. Ball one and no strikes to count. Frank Crosetti really moves around in that third base coaching box. This yell sends it down to Hank Bauer. Outfield playing Bauer deep and towards left. He's got real good power. Here's a swing and a high fly ball out behind second base. Shane Dean and Logan are going back, and Shane Dean makes the catch for the out. Bauer pops out to Red Shane Dean, out of the grass in short center field, and it brings up second baseman Gil McDougal. Gil has one of the two hits off Luberdet. He doubled. Hard shot, deep left center field in the third. Thrown out by Logan in the first. Right-handed batter. And he now has eight hits in 25 times at bat. McDougal. Burdett looks him over, and the first pitch sidearm strike on the outside corner, and McDougal looked like he was going to try to bunt one for base hit. Burdett now is on these right-handed batters going to a crossfire pitch on occasion, which is a mighty rough pitch to these fellas, especially with that sun uh, still shining on the mound, but the shadows of the plate. Here's the pitch, and there's a swing and a high fly ball in the short right. Henry Aaron is loping in, and he is there to make the catch for the out. Two away. McDougal flies to Aaron in fairly short right field, and it brings up center fielder Mickey Mantle. Mickey has gone out to Frank Torrey at first base unassisted and has been thrown up by the third baseman Eddie Matthews in a close play in the third. Now Mantle has asked umpire Tom Gorman to look over the baseball. Tom does. And he's throwing that one out of the ball game. No baseball goes out to Burdett who now rubs the shine off. Crandall crouching behind the plate. Two men are out. Nobody on base. Top half of the fifth inning. Crowd has grown quiet again as the Yankees lead two to one. Mantle steps out of the batter's box. Now he's in. Holds his bat right on the end. Picture of power at the plate and the pitch to Mickey. A swing and a foul back here towards us. Bouncing high and down the screen, and it's a strike one count. Strike one count on Mickey Mantle. Burdett looking around the ballpark. Finally looks down at Dell, gets his sign, starts into the motion. Two men are out. The pitch is swung on this. Strike two. And Mickey gave that one a good try. Hard swing by Mickey Mantle. Strike two count. The Yankees out in front in a very close ball game. Two to one. Fifth inning as this game moves on. Here's the pitch. Low and outside a ball. That looked like Burnett's screwball, which breaks away from a left-handed batter. It's ball one and strike two on Mickey Mantle. And a new baseball goes out to Lou. Burnett in this series has one victory and one loss. And his lifetime World Series record, four victories, one defeat. Established over the last two years. 
and uh, all of them of course against the New York Yankees one and two two outs nobody on base top half of the fifth inning Burnett delivers the pitch is low and outside it's ball two ball two and strike two Bill Joukowsky of the National League is down that right field line and Frank Yuman of the American League down the left field line as we've had six umpires again in the series. Ball two and strike two and Mickey backs away from home plate as Burdett is making uh, Mickey wait as he starts fidgeting around. Finally starts into the motion. 2-2 two -two pitch and it's Ball three, and Burnett had started off the mound. Lou Burnett thought he had Mantle on that breaking pitch on the inside corner, but umpire Tom Gorman says, nope, too low. Ball three, strike two. Mantle batting with two outs and nobody on base. On deck, it's catcher Yogi Berra. Berra, who still has his shin guards buckled on. Ball three and strike two. Here's the big pitch, and Mantle swings. It's a hard hit shot to the second baseman's left over. Shane Dean up over to first. He is out. And the Yankees are three up and three down in the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base, and the score is New York two and uh, Milwaukee one. Lather shaving creams have established themselves as the most popular kind in the country. Today, more than 12 million men use these bomb type creams, and more and more men are turning to Gillette Foamy. Here's real speed and convenience. Just a touch of the nozzle, and you get rich, creamy lather. Lather so full bodied that a little goes a long way. And Gillette Foamy is the only instant lather that contains K34, the exclusive antiseptic that kills harmful bacteria while you shave. Now you can get Gillette Foamy with cool, refreshing menthol added. Either type, regular or menthol foamy, costs just 79 cents for a three-month supply. Ask for Gillette Foamy today. I'm betting you'll say it's tops. Well, we go to the last half of the fifth inning, and now to take you the rest of the way in what should be a great finish. A real pleasure working with this fellow from Washington. He's done a very fine and a very accurate job on the play-by-play. -play. Bob Wolf. Thank you, Earl Gillespie. And hi again, everybody. It's Phil Bruton, who leads off against Bob Turley in the bottom half of the fifth inning. And Bruton has walked and he singled. One of the three hits for the Braves. Turley all set to work. Here comes the pitch. And there's a foul going off into the New York dugout. So it's strike one to Bruton. The walk and the single both came against Don Larson, who started out the ball game for New York and worked two and a third innings. Turley all set to work. He does not use the windup. He looks in to get the sign from Yogi Berra. Bruton set with a one strike count. Torrey is on deck. Turley ready. Here's the pitch. And it's a curveball which comes in high. And the count now is one and one to Bruton. The Braves, three hits. The New York Yankees, two. And New York is holding a 2 1 lead. Turley all set. Looks in to get the sign. One and one the count to Bruton. The pitch. A changeup is good for a strike called. And it's now ball one, strike two to Bruton. Turley mixes up the fastball. The curveball, which was so effective in his shutout victory, on the changeup. And he has become throughout the years a control artist, playing the corners. Ball one, strike two to Bruton. And now Bruton is back in waiting. Here's the pitch. And it's a swing and a miss. And Bruton is out on a strikeout. So there's one away in the bottom half of the fifth inning. On the batter now is Frank Torrey, who is sacrificed and popped up. Turley a strong-armed right-hander out there in the mound. And this afternoon marks his third appearance in three games over the span of four days. All set to work now as Torrey steps in. The outfield is playing him just about straight away. The pitch is high. It's ball one. On deck, Hank Aaron. And this is the bottom half of the fifth inning. 
New York leading 2-1 in this final game of the World Series. Torrey, left-handed batter at the plate. Here comes the next pitch. And it's a curve over for a called strike. The count now is 1-1 one one to Torrey. The Braves so far this afternoon have had two uh, very large scoring opportunities. They're able to score, however, just one run. Here's the pitch, and it's inside for a ball. Two balls, strike one to Torrey. In the first inning, Milwaukee had the sacks loaded. And there was but one out, but just one run came over to score. And in the third, they left three men stranded. There's a swing and a miss. And it's now two and two to Torrey. So altogether, Milwaukee has left six men on the sacks. And New York has left four. Count now is two and two to Torrey with one out in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Here's Turley's next pitch. And there's a line drive which is going foul out to the right field line. That was a hard shot off Torrey's bat. And it was curving and landed to foul just a few feet outside the line and right. So Torrey now pauses outside the batter's box before stepping back in. It's a beautiful sunny afternoon. Hank Bauer is playing out there deep and right as Torrey steps back with a two and two count. Turley back off the mound now steps up toes the rubber looks and they get the sign. Right hander ready. Nods once to Barra and then delivers. And the pitch comes inside. The count now is three and two. As Torrey steps out. Every pitch, every move can be the difference in the winning or losing of the World Series this afternoon. Every pitch carefully weighed by the pitcher and the catcher. Ready for the three and two pitch. Here it comes. It's inside ball four and Torrey draws a walk. So Milwaukee has on first base the tying run. As Hamron Hank Aaron, who's batting in the number four spot, steps in to face Bob Turley with one out and one on. Aaron has walked. He is singled. They both came off Don Larson. And he steps in now with Torrey on first and Kubek and McDougal at double play depth for the New York Yankees. Now Aaron already looks out to the mound. The outfield is deep. Howard is far back and left. Mantle deep in center. Here's the pitch. And it's a curve for a call strike in the outside corner. Aaron. Back in. Well, they have one strike count. You can hear the crowd in the background. Here it comes. And there's a high hopper over the head of Turley. Fielded by McDougal at second. He touches the bag for one. Throws to first for two. So the side retired with no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. On the score at the end of five innings is New York two, Milwaukee one. Do you, do you want a decent shave Do you really want a decent shave Then shave to let Shave to let With the blade and the razor by to let Shave to let well, Hank Aaron sent a bounder which McDougal took just about at the bag at second base and through to first base for the double play Torrey forced at second, and Aaron out to first. And now here in the sixth inning, Yogi Berra is up there on the first pitch, ball one. The attendance, 46,367 for the fourth time at Milwaukee. Yogi Berra with a ball one count. Yogi has walked and has scored and has grounded out. Lou Burdett on the mound with the New York Yankees leading by a 2-1 score in this sixth inning. Here's the pitch, and there goes a line drive to right field. Aaron is moving back. He's got it. A well-hit ball by Barra, and Aaron moving back toward the fence. 
Reached up, hauled it in. So there's one out in the sixth inning. Batter now is Elston Howard. Elston came through with a uh, base hit in the fourth inning and prior to that had the uh, sacrifice and got on, on the error by Torrey. That was the inning in which the Yankees scored two runs without a hit. There were two errors. The pitch to Howard is low for a ball. Thus far for New York, two runs on two hits. There are no errors. And for Milwaukee, one run, three hits, and two costly errors. Elston Howard waiting with a ball one count. Covington playing a deep left. Here's the windup. And the pitch is on the outside corner for a called strike, and the count now is one and one to Howard. Jerry Lumpy is on deck. Score is 2 1. Now, this will decide it all. The New York Yankees are leading. In this series, we've seen uh, pitchers working with little rest. But as they say, it's a long winter for resting. And they're giving it their very all in the series. Lou Burnett looks to get the sign from Del Crandall. Here's the windup. On the pitch on the way is swung on and fouled back. And it's now ball one and strike two to Howard. Matthews is pulled over close to the line. Logan is pulled over just a bit in the hole at short. As Burdett gets the sign from Crandall with the ball one strike two count. Here's the windup on the pitch on the way. Swung on and missed. And Howard is out on a strikeout. He took a big cut that time. For out number two in the sixth inning. Jerry Lumpy got on base on an error by Torrey in the second. And he grounded out in the fourth. He stops up there now with two outs, nobody on. New York holding that slender two to one lead. Burdett looks in with the sign. The outfield is playing Lumpy just about straight away. Not too deep. The pitch, there's a ground ball off to go of Burdett. Going over to Shane Dietz. He's up with it. The front of first, pulling out. Side retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And the score after the top half of the sixth inning remains New York 2, Milwaukee 1. Here's something I've been just waiting to tell you. Now you can get a Gillette one-piece TV razor for only 79 cents. You heard it. While they last, this regular dollar value costs only 79 cents. What a whale of a bargain it is, because included with the world-famous Gillette razor is a dispenser of easy-shaven Gillette blue blades and a sturdy compact travel case. Be sure to get in on this great buy. The Gillette TV razor is made in one piece. That means instant blade changing and cleaning. Double edges give you twice as many shaves per blade. And you get the most in clean, refreshing shaves. Shaves that look better and last far longer. Pick up your Gillette TV razor. It's on display everywhere. Just 79 cents for the razor and a Spencer of Gillette blue blades and modern travel case while they last. As this ball game is rolling right along, and Wes Covington is leading off as Andy Carey now goes in at third base for New York. Saw so Andy Carey is now in and Lumpy is out at third base for the New York Yankees. We're all set to go now as Covington steps up. And the first pitch is swung on. It's a foul ball going to deep right center. Bauer is back in the cinder path. He's got it. Wes Cullingan flying deep to Hank Bauer, who took the ball out in right center. Just a bit on the edge of the cinder path there. So there's one away. On the batter, Eddie Matthews, who has drawn two intentional walks. Gets a nice hand. Andy has had a few misfortunes at the plate in the series, but these fans are right behind him here in Milwaukee. Here's the pitch, and it comes in low for a ball. With Matthews' power, just one pitch could change the complexion of this ball game. New York holding a 2-1 lead. Matthews the batter, and the ball won the count. There's one out. Here it comes. There's a ground ball going out to McDougal at second. He's up with it. They throw to Scourin for the out. So they're two away in the bottom half of the sixth inning. 
And Del Crandall is up there now. In the first, with the sacks loaded and two out, Crandall was fooled by a strike three call. In the third, with a similar situation, two outs and the sacks loaded, Crandall sent a smash, which was off Charlie. McDougal came in with a one-handed barehand scoop up for the throw of first in the out on a sensational play. There goes a long fly ball to left through the line. Howard is going back. He's looking up. It is a ball. feet with a home run over the fence and left to tie the ball game at 2-2. Two -two. That is the first hit off Turley. The batter is Logan. Here's the pitch. And it is a strike call. You can hear the excitement here in Milwaukee as Del Prandtl with a home run over the fence in left has tied the ball game. There's a high pop-up which was fouled out center first. Going for the ball to scour near the seats. He jumps and he can't get it. And he falls over the railing partway. Just about sits up there. And now goes back toward a spot at first. Since he relieved in the third. Logan the batter with a strike two count. On the pitch comes in high. Ball one, strike two. And a thrill packed game this afternoon. All tied at 2 2 in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Charlie Ruddy delivers. On the next pitch is over the head of Logan. He had to uh, stoop below it. Count levels of two and two to Johnny Logan, who has popped up and flied out. There are two outs. As the Braves go to the Yankees' big weapon of the series, the home run ball, to tie the score on their fourth hit of the afternoon. Logan waits, Charlie ready. Here comes the pitch. And there goes a line drive to left in the line. Howard is moving for it. He's got it. About 10 to 15 feet from the fence in left. So Logan is out. Side retired with one run on the homer. No errors. Nobody left. The score at the end of six. New York two, Milwaukee two. Hurry and get your Gillette. Razor. Just 79 cents. in short supply. So hurry and get her. Get your Gillette TV razor. Go get one fast and be in luck for 79 cents instead of a buck. Well, we're starting to come down that home stretch right now. It's a 2-2 ball game. And as we move into the uh, seventh inning, coming up, Bill Scourin, who's over to, he is an RBI. In the Yankees' bullpen, Whitey Ford starts warming up. Scourin steps in. So this is it, coming down into inning number seven. And you can't get it closer than this, with the series tied at three games apiece. And the final game tied at two runs apiece. Scour in there. Here's the pitch. And it's over for a call strike. On deck will be Tony Kubek. So far, the Yankees have two runs. 
two hits. Milwaukee, two runs, four hits. And the Braves have made two errors. Burnett looks in with the sign. Scour and waits. Strike one the count. Here's the windup. The pitch on the way. This is the outside corner. On the count now is one and one to Bill Scourin. The outfield is playing him deep in all fields. On this bright, sunny afternoon here in Milwaukee, with the World Series championship now hanging in the balance in a tie ball game in the seventh inning. Here's the windup. And here comes the pitch. And there's a ground ball, which is in a left field for a base hit. In between Matthews and Logan. And Scourin is on first. A single. Out to left, skipping through the hole. Tony Kubek, who was a sacrifice fly, which brought in a run on the second, drew an intentional walk in the fourth. And now he steps in there with Scourin on first and nobody out. We're in the seventh inning. And now Milwaukee starts getting the uh, Braves bullpen busy. Carl Willey starts forming up. Kubek in. The pitch is a strike called. A breaking pitch on the outside corner to Tony Kubek. Scouring on first and nobody out. Third baseman Eddie Matthews has moved in. He's playing right now in a line with the bag at third. Logan and Shane Deitz double play depth as Kubek steps out to get some dirt. The outfield is playing straight away for Kubek. And now Tony is back in. Scouring on first. Nobody out. Burnett with the stretch and the pause. Here's the pitch. And there is a pop-up. A shortstop. Logan is waiting for it. About 15 feet from the bag. And he has it. So there is one out and one on. As we await the uh, number nine batter. Bob Turley. Who's now coming up out of the uh, Yankee dugout. Well, there are thrills galore, and you can feel the tension mounting as each inning goes on. And when Turley came up to the plate, Whitey Ford, who was warming up, went back to sit down again. So here we are in the seventh with this World Series championship just hanging in the balance in this 2-2 game. Scowron on first, there's one out. Turley steps in. All set to go. Here's the pitch. And a punt is fouled back. It's strike one. Eddie Matthews came charging in that time, as did Frank Torrey. And Turley now looks down to Frankie Crosetti, the third base coach, before uh, getting set once again in the batter's box. Burdett has stepped back off the mound. Glove off, he's rubbing up the ball. Matthews, the third baseman, has come in now. He's playing on the edge of the infield grass. Torrey staying over there at first base. Keeping the scouring close. All set to go. Burnett gets the sign now from Crandall. The stretch and the pause. The pitch. A bunt. It's fielded by the pitcher. He slips. Now gets up. Throws to first for the out. Shane Deitz covering at first base on the sacrifice. As Burnett came up with the ball, he slipped, went to his knees, and then threw to first as Scour moved in a scoring position. So the Yankees have a big man at second base in the person of Bill Scourin as Hank Bauer, who has been a big Yankee batting star in this series, comes up for the fourth time. He is lined out, roundabout, and he has popped up. There are two outs, Scourin on second. The score is not at 2-2. As Lou Burdett looks in to get the sign. Scourin now takes a good lead off second. Here's the pitch, and it comes in high for a ball. With Logan pulled over in the hole for Bauer. That's giving uh, Scourin pretty good room to range off second base. Ball one to Bauer. Outfield is deep. Infield pulled around. Burdett already. Bauer waiting with a ball one count. Scourin on second base. Here's the stretch and the pause by Burdett. The pitch. There goes a pop up. Third baseman Matthews is waiting. He's got it. Side retired in the seventh. No runs. One hit. Hours and one left. 
The score after the top half of the seventh inning. New York 2, Milwaukee 2. Hey, don't tell everybody. Tell you why. Because Gillette only has a limited supply of Gillette TV razors. Dig this price. Just 79 cents. So take this advice. Shh. And hurry, hurry, hurry. Get one fast. Your Gillette TV razor. Pause 30 seconds for station identification. The yellow label is your only guarantee of getting real Vichy, Saratoga Vichy, if you want real Vichy. Get the yellow label, yellow label, yellow label, yellow label. Yellow label. Yellow label. Yellow label. Insist on the famous yellow label that says Saratoga Vichy. Garage doors for residential, commercial, industrial use. Manual or remote control. Literature on request. Free estimates. Contact Murphy Overhead Doors. 1148 Central Avenue, Albany. WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Lou Burnett will lead off in the bottom half of this seventh inning in a 2-2 ball game. And Burnett, as you know, swings a very potent bat. Bob Turley all set to work. Here's the pitch. And it's a swing and a miss. Strike one. Burnett steps back in. The Yankees bullpen busy once again. And now Lou is back out of the batter's box. Art Dittmar warming up for New York. Here it comes. Burnett cuts and misses. Count now, strike two to Burnett. Blue at the plate this afternoon. Is grounded out and he is struck out. Charlie looks in with the sign. Two strikes to count. And Burnett steps out as Charlie stood there just for the moment looking in. Now both ready. Here it comes. And there's a ground ball. Too short. Kubek makes a throw for the out. So there's one away. On that play, Andy Carey, the third baseman, started to go for the ball. He saw that Kubek was in better position to make the play. Kubek had to come in just a bit and made a quick throw to get Burnett and to bring up Red Shane Deanst, who was singled and grounded out twice. And it was Red Shane Deanst who has scored the uh, first run for the Braves. Crandall's homer scored the second. Here's the pitch. And it comes in low. On deck, Bill Bruton. Score of the ball game is 2-2. And this is the bottom half of the seventh inning. The series could not be tied tighter than it is. Here's the pitch. And there's a ground ball going out to McDougald. He's up with it. They throw to Scarum. On the out. Shane Deans does out number two. And Bill Bruton. The batting hero of the first two games is coming up. Whitey Ford now joins Dittmar, warming up for the New York Yankees. Bruton, this afternoon, has walked. He is single. He has struck out. Well, it's nail-biting time here in Milwaukee. You can just feel the tension. Here's the pitch, and it comes in high. And the count now, ball one to Bruton. Two outs, bottom half of the seventh. Ball game coming right down the home stretch now. Still deadlocked to 2 2. Charlie delivers. And there's a ground ball going into the first baseman scour, and he plays it deep behind the bag, runs to the base for the out. Side retired on three ground outs in the bottom half of the seventh inning. The score at the end of seven New York 2 and Milwaukee 2. What a clamor those Milwaukee fans set up when their Braves are at bat. And here's something I want to cheer about the Gillette World Series Special. 
a one-piece TV racer for only 79 cents. It's a regular $1 value, but for a limited time, you get the Gillette TV Razor, a dispenser of Gillette blue blades and good-looking travel case for only 79 cents. The Gillette TV Razor is a marvel of engineering and craftsmanship. You just turn the handle and the razor opens for instant blade changing and cleaning. It's double-edged, too. This means you change blades only half as often, save time and money. Remember, the supply of this World Series special won't last long. Better pick yours up first chance you get. Just 79 cents for a Gillette one-piece TV razor, a dispenser of Gillette blue blades and handy travel case. Man, what a bargain. Well, here we are in this eighth inning, and it's still 2-2. A break. A long hit. Just one run at this stage of the ball game can mean the world's championship, something that these two teams have battled for in the start of spring training and right throughout the long pennant fight. And right here in the World Series, just one run at this time can separate these two teams and make one the world's champion. Here's McDougald in there now to face Burdett as the right hand is all set to work. Looks in to get the sign from Crandall. Here's the windup, and the pitch is inside and high for ball one. Backing up Burdett, the infield. Matthews is playing just about on the line with the bag at third. Logan's over there at short. Shane Deans at second. Torrey at first. The outfield is Covington, Bruton, and Aaron. McDougald, Mantle, and Barra. So Lou has big guns to face here in this eighth. Here's the windup. And the pitch on the way. There goes a fly ball to right center field. Aaron is moving for it. He's under it now. He's got it. Well, there's one out in this eighth inning. And Mickey Mantle is up there now. The dangerous Mickey Mantle, who with one solid hit, one of those tape measure jobs, could change the complexion of the series. Burdett, we're working mighty cautiously on Mantle. He looks in now to get the sign from Crandall. Starts the windup. Here comes the pitch. And it comes in low for a ball. As Burdett delivers his momentum, brings him right down off that pitching rubber, right down off the mound. Burdett now steps back to the rosin bag. Count now's ball one to Mantle. Outfield far back in all fields, one out in the eighth inning. Here's the windup, and the next pitch is on the way. And as a strike call to the inside corner, and the count now's one and one to Mantle. Burdett. Again, steps back off the mound. Each pitch is important. And very deliberately, very methodically, waits between pitches, goes to the rosin bag once again. The count to Mantle is one and one. Mickey has stepped out of the batter's box. Outfield far back in all fields. Burdett again toes the rubber, gets the sign from Crandall. He's all set to work. One and one the count. Here's the windup. Here comes the pitch. And it comes in low. And the count now is ball two and strike one to Mantle. On deck, Yogi Berra. We're in the eighth inning. The series tied at three games apiece. This game tied at two runs apiece. And the championship is hanging right here in the balance. Ball two and strike one to Mantle. Burdett again flips the rosin bag off to the side. And Mantle has stepped out. Time called by the plate umpire Tom Gorman till Mickey steps in. Now he's back in and waiting. The counter's ball two, strike one. Burdett looks forward to get the side from Crandall. Now the right hander winds. Here comes the pitch. And it's a swing and a miss. On the count now is two and two to Mantle. And you'll see the crowd here just leaning forward as that pitch comes up. Two and two, again, Burdett is back off the mound. Now a little rosin. Mantle waiting. Two and two the count. Burdett ready once again as he gets the sign from Crandall. Right-hander starts the windup on the two and two pitch on the way. Strike three.
Strike three call to Mickey Mantle. Two outs in the eighth. And Yogi Berra, known as the tremendous clutch hitter for the New York Yankees, is up there. Berra has walked. And he has scored. Rounded out. And he is lined out. Two outs in the eighth as Berra steps in. Burnett gets the sign, starts the windup. Here's the pitch. And it misses the outside corner. Ball one. When the Braves come up on the bottom half of the eighth inning, they'll have the number three, four, and five batters. Ball one, the count to Yogi Berra. Two outs. And nobody on for the New York Yankees in this 2-2 game. Here's the windup. And the pitch. There goes a fly ball to deep right field. Air is going near the line. It is up against the fence in deep right. Barrows on the way to second. And he goes in standing up. Yogi Berra. Hit one. Inside the right field line. Deep in the right field corner. Up against the fence. Just a few feet away from clearing the fence. Which juts out at the uh, 315 mark. Juts out about... 20 feet or so, it's a 10-foot fence. It hit up against it, and Barra is in at second base for the double. So it's Elston Howard stepping in with Barra. Perched on second and two outs in this eighth inning. Howard has one hit this afternoon. Here's the pitch. And there is a high foul which is going over toward the seats. Torrey is racing for it. He can't get it. It's beyond the Braves dugout and into the seats. Well, the Braves now have the uh, bullpen busy out there. Willie and McMahon. Both have come out to warm up. Now's Howard. Now steps back in with a one strike count. Barra on second base, two away in the eighth in a 2 2 game. Now Burnett looks in to get the sign from Crandall. There's the stretch and the pause by Lou. Here's the pitch, and it's inside. One and one to Elston Howard. Each side has four hits. Each has two runs. Can you get it any more even than that? The World Series tied at three games apiece. Each team with the same number of runs and hits in this eighth inning. One and one the count to Howard. Here's the pitch. And there's a high hopper, which is by the pitcher going to center field for a base hit. Ferris coming in to score. Elston Howard sent a ground ball through the middle for a base hit in the center field. Yogi Berra came in to score, and the New York Yankees lead by a score of 3-2 to two in this eighth inning. Logan tried to uh, go over toward second to cut that one off, but he couldn't get to it as that hard ground ball went by Burnett and in the center. New York is in front. On the batter now is Andy Carey. The pitch. There's a ball which is off the club of Matthews. Logan picks it up, throws to second. Two late. And uh, the ball thrown by Logan almost got away from Shane Deinst, who had to make a one-handed grab of the ball to prevent the ball from going into right field. It's scored as an infield hit. For Andy Carey, as Elston Howard is now at second. That brings up Bill Scourin as New York has now come up with three hits in a row. This run, incidentally, is the first earned run for the Yankees. Bill Scourin, one for three up there at the plate. 
Run on first and second. Two outs. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. Strike one. Lou Burnett steps back off the mound. Scourin waiting at the plate. On a force out play, he brought a run over in the second. He has since flat out and has singled. Stretching the pause. Here's the pitch. And it's inside. Count now is one and one to Scourin. Runners at first and second. Elston Howard's single in the center field. Drove in Yogi Berra, who had doubled. And the Yankees are leading by a 3-2 score in this top of the eighth. Scourin waits with a one and one count. Burdett with the pause. Here's the pitch. And it's a swing and a miss as one broke on the outside corner. Count now is ball one, strike two. And now Scourin steps out to get some dirt. Now Bill back in with a ball one strike two count. The runners, Howard. Andy Carey, second and first. Burdett gets the sign from Del Crandall. Now already, stretch on the pause. The pitch is just a bit high. Count now is two and two to scour, and he looked that one over very carefully. And now uh, steps out of the batter's box for the moment. Two and two, Bills now back in. Score, the New York Yankees three and the Milwaukee Braves two. We're in the top half of the eighth inning. As these teams battle right here in the home stretch for the coveted crown. Stretch in the pause. Here's the pitch. And there goes a fly ball to deep left center field. A long cloud, it's going, going. It is a home run. Homer up into the seats in left center. A three run homer for Bill Scour and Tony Kubek now steps up and fouls the first pitch off for strike one. Howard, Carey, and Scourin all came in a score on that home run, which is Scourin's second of the series. He has four RBIs today. And the Yankees now lead six to two. Here comes the pitch, and it is high. The count now is one and one to Kubek. That was a mammoth blast by Scourin, scoring Howard from second, Carey from first. The Yankees, with four hits in a row, coming after two are out in the eighth inning. Here's the pitch. It's over for a called strike two to Kubek. And New York, which moved into this eighth inning. In a 2-2 deadlock. Has now broken the deadlock. And with four runs, the Yankees are in front by a 6-2 score. Here's the pitch to Kubek. And it's a swing and a miss. The ball gets away from Crandall. He picks it up, throws to first for the out. So it's a strikeout. And the putout registered at first by Torrey. In this eighth inning, the Yankees come up with four runs. Four hits, no errors, and nobody left. And the score after the top half of the eighth inning. New York six, Milwaukee two. Look sharp, feel sharp. Be sharp and listen, mister. How are you fixed for blades? Do you have blades? How are you fixed for blades? You better check.
the Milwaukee Braves up in the bottom half of this eighth inning as Frank Torrey leads off. And there is strike one. the pitch and there's a ground ball McDougal goes far to his right comes up with the ball makes a throw to first holding out what a play a tremendous play by Gil McDougal the one far to his right made a backhand stab with the ball and throwing slightly off balance got it to first base for the out. The batter now is Hank Aaron. McDougal has come up with two sparklers of field this afternoon. An earlier one on Crandall. Here's the pitch. There goes a high fly ball to left in the line. Howard is going to the line, still moving. He crosses the line. He's got it. They're two away in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Now the batter now is Wes Covington. Who is 0 for 3? Wes on a ground out in the uh, first inning. Draw to run over the plate. So he is one RBI. He steps up with two outs, bottom half of the eighth. And the Yankees leading 6 to 2. Now Covington uh, steps in to face Bob Turley, who came on after two and a third innings. Here's the pitch, and it is a ball. Since Bob arrived in the scene, he has given up just one hit, and that was Crandall's homer in the sixth. Ball one, the count to West Covington. Two away. Turley looks in for the sign. Here's the pitch. And there goes a pop-up along the third baseline. Carey moves in foul territory. Now he's along the line, and he takes it as the wind moves it back just in fair territory for the out. So the out on the pop-up to Andy Carey to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And the score at the end of eight full innings is New York 6, Milwaukee 2. It's in short supply. So hurry and get, get your Gillette TV razor. Go get one fast and be in luck. Just 79 cents instead of a buck. Well, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. We're right now going into the ninth inning of the seventh game. And the score, 6-2 with the uh, New York Yankees out in front. Don McMahon will be coming in at this point to take over from Lou Burnett, who gave it a tremendous try this afternoon. Moving into the uh, top half of the eighth inning, it was a 2-2 game. And the two runs, which had come earlier in the second, both were unearned runs. Coming in the second frame on no hits and two errors. But in the eighth, with two outs and nobody on, Vera doubled off the fence in right. And then Howard, with a single to center, drove in the tie-breaking run. Carey then had an infield hit, moving Elston Howard to second. And at this stage of the ballgame, Bill Scarron unloaded a tremendous swat into the seats high up in left center. A three-run homer, which will put the Yankees in front 6-2. to two. Here's Bob Turley, and the uh, first pitch is fouled back. 
Strike one. Don McMahon, who is out there now to pitch this ninth inning. And as you might expect, it's a very quiet crowd here in Milwaukee. Here it comes, and it's inside. One and one. Well, there are many series heroes to talk about, to write about. But one that you'll have to note is Bob Turley, who up to this point, with three appearances in three straight games, he swings and misses. Ball one, strike two. Bob had a saving shutout on Monday, a saving relief performance yesterday, and so far today he's turned in another brilliant relief job. He's up there at the plate with the ball, one strike, two count. And the next pitch is a strike on the outside corner. And Turley is out. So there's one out. On the battle now is Hank Bauer, who is 0 for 4. And when you get right down to it, the crusher in the eighth was supplied by the Yankees' favorite weapon, and it has been throughout the series, the home run. Here's the pitch to Bauer, and it's a called strike. Strike one. On deck, Gil McDougal, who has come up with two tremendous fielding plays. Here's McMahon's pitch, and it's a swing and a miss. Strike two. Well, Milwaukee is not out of it, but they'll have to do a heap of battling back when they come up in the bottom half of this ninth inning. Strike two, the count to uh, Hank Bauer. Here it comes, and the pitch is inside and low. Hank started to move for it and held back, and now Tom Gorman uh, examines the ball. So Bauer now uh, moves back in the batter's box. McMahon on the mound. That pitch that Bauer jumped back on was very close to the bat. There's a swing and a miss, and Bauer is out. Two strikeouts by McMahon here in this ninth inning. The batter is Gil McDougal, who gets a fine hand from the crowd. It's been a wonderful crowd here in Milwaukee right throughout the series, and this is a magnificent sporting gesture. McDougal, who has hurt the Braves, getting his fine hand here in the ninth. There's the pitch coming in low for a ball. It's an excellent crowd also in New York City. Here's the pitch. And there goes a looping ball into short right for a base hit. So McDougal is on first. On the battle now is Mickey Mantle, who is 0 for 4, coming up with two outs, one on in the ninth inning, and the score, the Yankees 6 on the Braves 2. Mantle has grounded out three times. He is looking at a call strike three, stretching the pause by McMahon. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss for strike one. Strike one, the count to Mantle. We're in the ninth inning. There's a sign now from Crandall. Here's the pitch, and it comes in high. And it's one and one. This game, deadlocked, 2-2, suddenly broke wide open in the eighth with two outs when Yogi Berra came through with a big double to right. And before the inning was over, successive singles by Howard and Kerry, plus the scour and homer, had given the Yankees a four-run margin, 6-2. to two. Mantle about to move for one, holds back. It's ball two and strike one. Ball two and strike one to Mantle. So look toward first. The pitch comes in high, and the count now is three and one. Three and one. The outfield is far back in all fields for Mantle. Don McMahon with the stretch and the pause. A look toward the runner. Here it comes. 
And the pitch comes low, and Mantle draws a walk, moving Gil McDougald to second. And bringing up Yogi Berra. As Crandall goes out partway to the mound to speak to his pitcher. Carl Willey again is throwing for the Braves in the bullpen. And Berra comes up. His double in the eighth inning opened up the gates for the New York Yankees. Men on first and second, two away in this night. McMahon all set to work. The stretch and the pause for the right-hander. Here's the pitch. And it's over for a call strike one to Yogi Berra. Elston Howard is kneeling off to the on-deck circle. There are two on and two outs in the ninth. Stretch in the pause. Here's the pitch. Berra sends a ground ball out to Shane Deanst. He's up with it. The throw to first for the out. And the side is retired. In the ninth. No runs. One hit. No errors. And two left. And so we're going right down to the wire now. The bottom half of the ninth inning. As the Braves really have their work cut out for them now. Trailing by a score of 6-2. to two. And coming up now. Needing four to tie the ball game and stay alive. And five to take the crown. So far, off Bob Turley in five and two-third innings, he's given up one hit, Crandall's homer. He's given up that one run. He has struck out two, and he has walked two, including one on purpose. So it's been a tremendous pitching effort by Bob Turley. And the Braves have their work cut out for them. As Eddie Matthews leads off in the bottom half of this ninth inning. Six to two, New York leads. Matthews, who has drawn two intentional walks and has grounded out, steps in now. As the Braves are right down here in their last chance. Turley looks in to get the sign from Yogi Berra. Matthews waiting. And Bob takes that big, deep breath before he pitches. Here it comes. And it's a curve over for a call strike. Strike one to Eddie Matthews. On deck, Del Crandall and Johnny Logan. Charlie all set. Strike one, the count to Matthews. Right-hander nods. Here comes the pitch. And it misses the outside corner, and the count now is one and one. All the Yankees, as we go into this bottom half of the night, have the bullpen active once again. Turley out there, pitching tremendous relief ball, delivers. And there's a curve which comes in low, and the count now is ball two and strike one. Dittmar and Duran both warming up for New York. Here's the pitch. And there is a ball. As Matthews started a move for that one, held back. Vera quickly turned to see what Tom Gorman's decision would be. And it's ruled as a ball. So the Braves still in there battling in the bottom half of this ninth inning. As the count now goes to ball three and strike one to Matthews. Turley takes that deep breath. Here's the pitch. And it comes in low, and Matthews arouses the Milwaukee hopes by leading off the bottom half of the ninth with a walk. Del Crandall, who so far has the only hit off Turley, a home run in the sixth, is stepping up. Gil McDougal goes over to speak to Turley. As Crandall sets himself squarely in the batter's box. Looks out toward the mound. 
Matthews on first. There's nobody out. The stretch and the pause. The pitch is over for a call strike. Strike one, the count to Adele Crandall, who looked at a call strike three his first time around. It was out on a tremendous fielding play in the third as McDougald scooped it over to first and then homered. Here it comes. And there goes a fly ball to short left. Howard is coming in. And has it. Took it just about five feet or so inside the uh, line. So there's one away. One on. Batter is Johnny Logan. Who is 0 for 3. Johnny Logan up there. And Adcock has moved into the on-deck circle. Out there in uh, right field, Hank Bauer has just been uh, moved in just a bit. Here's the pitch. And there goes a fly ball to center field. Mantle is moving back, still moving back. He's got it. Just about two or three feet from the cinder path in deep center. So Logan with a long fly out. Is out number two. And now uh, Joe Adcock will come up as a pinch hitter for McMahon. Well, the Yankees did their uh, scoring to break the uh, tie with two outs. And now the Braves are faced with the same problem because the last out, when it comes, will mean the end of the series. Adcock in there, right-handed batter. Here's the pitch, and it comes in low. Ball one. Outfield is back for Adcock. Matthews, who has walked, is on first there, two away. The stretch and the pause by Turley. Here's the pitch, and it's over for a called strike, and the count now is one and one to Adcock. Little rosin for Bob Turley as he steps back off the mound. Turley working very slowly, very deliberately. Again, takes that deep breath. There's the pause now by Bob. Here's the pitch, and there goes a base hit to left field. Matthews goes to second base, and Joe Adcock is on first. Matthews on second. They're two away, and the batter is Red Shaneast. Mantia will run for Adcock. Well, Adcock came up with a hit in the uh, tenth inning of yesterday's game, which aroused the uh, Milwaukee hopes. And now Mantia over there as a runner. Matthews on second. Two away. The batter is Shane Deanst. Here's the pitch. It's a strike call. Oh, Milwaukee still in this ball game with two outs and two on. Shane needs to the plate with a strike one count. The stretch and the pause by Bob Turley. Here's the pitch. And there goes the ball to left center. Mantle moves in. He's got it. And there it is. The New York Yankees are the winners. And Bob Turley is mauled and congratulated by his teammates as he comes in to the dugout. The final score, the New York Yankees, six runs, eight hits, no errors. Milwaukee, two runs, five hits, two errors. Stay tuned for an interview direct from the clubhouse of those victorious New York Yankees. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The World Series is over. And this afternoon, the New York Yankees won out by the final score of 6-2. to two. And now... To wind up this World Series broadcast, let's pick up Mel Allen and some of those victorious Yankees. Mel, take over. Uh, what do you want me? Kiss him? Uh, here we are. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the Yankee dressing room, and here is Yogi Berra and Bob Turley, the battery that wound up the ball game. Bob, uh, 
You came in in relief and uh, pitched your second uh, great uh, game in this series. Well, Mel, all I can say is this is the greatest moment of my life, and, and what a comeback by what a great ball club. I tell you, this is the greatest club I've ever played on, and what a bunch of guys. Well, after you'd been belted out here in the second game, you came back to pick the Yanks off the floor, and they're behind three games to one. Got the last out yesterday, and in relief of Larson, pitched yeah. magnificently today. Thank you, Mel. And, Yogi, you've been now uh, in ten World Series, as many as Babe Ruth and Joe DiMaggio. Has there ever been one that gave you as great a thrill as this one? Well, I guess this one is. I guess the National League won't be so um, uh, smart now, Mel. They thought they had us down 3-1, and one, and we come back fighting. This is the best one I've ever been in. With the score tied uh, there in the eighth inning, you all with two down. Did you think you had a home run that ball at uh, well, got a double on? I thought I did. I didn't hit it real good, but I hit it down the line. But I think the wind held it up a little bit, though. Well, Yogi, good luck to you and Elston Howard, who came through that two-out single. Ellie, since you uh, went into the series, made that great play at the stadium of the Yankees down. The whole team seemed to pick up, and uh, you've been on many now. What do you think of this one? Man, I think this is one of the greatest ball clubs I ever played with, and thanks that uh, I came back and were able to help the ball club with the help of Bob Chiller, which fits great, and also Mike Google and Hank Bauer. Just some more to and uh, here is Casey and Bill Scarron at the homer. Bill, did you like this homer any better than you did that grand slammer two years ago in the seventh game that won the World Series against the Dodgers? Well, I would say that Elson Howard did the big thing by driving in the winning run. Mine was secondary like it was in the 1956 World Series. Yogi hit two that day, and Howard hit one, and I hit the grand slammer. Casey, you have now won uh, nine pennants. And this is your seventh world championship tying Joe McCarthy's record. Has there ever been any one before this that you enjoyed any greater? Well, I'd have to say that this is the uh, greatest uh, year to win a pennant and a world's championship. The reason I say that is for three or four reasons. We got such a bad start when you're only in a seven-game series that with a bad start, you can't afford to make a mistake. But our ball club came back and without making a mistake had to go right through the line and win four like here at the end. Now here's the other big thing. It showed our ball club that it was a good ball club although we faltered the last month and a half the season. It also showed that we have recovered and that we can now play in the National League. <laughs> that Casey Stengel, Del Webb, Del Webb uh, co-owner of the Yankees. Del? Mel, this was wonderful. I think this is the greatest World Series that I ever went to. We've been through a lot of them. But we come from behind and played very well. It's only the third time in history that the team has been down three games to one and come back, and only the second time in a seven-game series. I don't know about that, but I know we come back. That's the main thing. Well, thanks a lot, Del. Here is uh, Dan Topping, president of the New York Yankees. Dan, uh, what did you think when the Yankees were down three games to one? Well, Mel, it didn't look good, but I always knew this club started off the, what, the kind of a club they were. They slowed up a little bit. But finally, they got back to where they started. They're still a great ball club. Maybe they found out from never never get too easy, never go too easy. Just keep trying, we'll win. Here's a fellow who uh, started off slowly in the series, but then picked up at the stadium with that home run in the key game. Uh, every game's a key game when you're behind three games to one and then hit the double uh, with the bases loaded. Uh, and today, Gil, you played uh, magnificently. Uh, defensively late in the game and that double play ball of Aaron's it, it seemed the ball was hit right through the middle for a base hit you turn it into the DP yeah he happened to be in the right spot today Mel everything seemed to go right I guess it was our year and uh, they're a great ball club and we were very fortunate to beat him